<laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Bullhugger Podcast. I'm Moose Lundstrom. I'm Josh Finley. And we have my very old friend I'm learning more stuff about as we go, Mr. Troy Rivera. What's up? Well, how, how, how are you, buddy? Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Good, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Before we get started, I always forget to say this off the bat. I want to thank the Brush Chamber of Commerce for letting us use the Sands Theater to do our podcast. And it's very cool because it's a great venue. I really like doing it here. I like the background and all the good stuff. Um, they've been so awesome about all of this. So thank you, Brush Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Teresa Lake, for supporting this. Also, you can check all our stuff on the Bullhucker podcast, uh, bullhucker.com. You can find us on all social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Make sure you throw us a like or a follow or whatever that uh, particular uh, social media demands. I'm stumbling. I'm stumbling, Troy. <laughs> I'm making you nervous. You are making me nervous. It's been a while. So also, if yeah, no matter what you're on, if it's the uh, iTunes or Spotify, whatever, please follow the podcast and uh, you know leave a leave a message for old Troy if you uh, <laughs> disagree and be honest and let us know how you're doing so far on this. So we've changed the format a little bit, so you no longer have to wait a week to hear the uh, answer. We're going to hear it right tonight when oh, cool. when uh, Josh and I guess it correctly. Uh, and we go <laughs> two and zero oh today, baby. Two and zero oh today, hope, baby. Come on, one of the twins. Because <laughs> we were on the slide there for a while, but I got the old good luck back. So um, we usually start this off by saying how we know each other. Uh, you two just met. Yep, yep. It's your first met, and Troy and I have. I, I think we figured out nineteen ninety nine. You said it was ninety nine. So that's been a that's been a few minutes ago, twenty two yep. years ago, right? Exactly. Jeez. Uh, it was the uh, so you. We had Pierre Carrillo. He was a DJ at the club. Did he replace you or did you he replace him? He came after me, yeah. He came after he came you. After so, uh, And I've known Troy for a long time. We actually, the first time I went to Vegas, oh. I was with Troy. Oh, <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> Let me tell you. Go to Vegas with Larry, you'll never sleep. Because <laughs> I snore. <laughs> no, because you're like, it was like a kid in a candy shop it when you like, went. It was, it was awful. Um, <laughs> well, but we went to Vegas. It was for a uh, bar and nightclub convention. If you've right. ever been to one, oh. they're amazing. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but here's what they do, uh, Josh. They give you like quarter shots of liquor oh, yeah. to try everything. And they're like, try this, try this, try mm -hmm. this. And I did. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, you get pretty shit-faced. You stayed most of the time in the DJ booth part, right? I did. Because yeah. they have a huge DJ part of that. And it it's really is pretty cool. If you're going to own a bar, I, I suggest going. But uh, I'm going to tell you the funny story that I remember from that the most. It was me and Troy and Aubrey, the head waitress, and our boss, Helen, who's an older <laughs> Italian woman. And Helen was great. We first flew we into Vegas. Uh, they had a whole, a whole casino roped off. Remember that? It was mm -hmm. all fenced off. We asked the cab driver, what's going on here? Well, they're filming a movie here. What movie? Rush Hour 2. Rush Hour 2. Oh, right. That's right. Well, that's pretty cool. Who doesn't like that, right? So we all get hammered, except for <laughs> Helen, at the uh, convention. And we're crawling. I mean, I'm not even speaking English at this point. I am pretty drunk. Troy's got it together. <laughs> Troy, Troy, Troy's, Troy's the I had to babysit Larry. He had to babysit Larry, you know. You make sure the fat one gets back alive, Troy. That's your job. <laughs> so uh, we're walking. And I, I was sober enough to remember this. Uh, we were, it's wedding chapel, wedding chapel, gun shop, wedding chapel, pawn shop. A limo pulls up. And an Asian couple gets out. And it's a young Asian couple, right? And Helen proceeds to scream, look, look, it's Jackie Chan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Yep. Helen, this guy's like a third of Jackie Chan's age, dude. <laughs> he might not even be Chinese. I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> He's Asian. I don't know. You know. That was true. But remember the look they gave us? Like, <laughs> exactly. Oh, like, my God. <laughs> <laughs> remember that one remember that mm -hmm. yeah so the looks could kill and injure yourself they gave that look to oh us. my god what was your best memory of that weekend that whole oh my gosh the one is i remember there's a couple of them the one that i remember is i went upstairs into the hotel room because i was exhausted you know hanging with this guy i mean this guy had more drive than i did and so i remember going to bed and then i remember waking up like it was close to about close to five o'clock and now i looked over and no Larry in his bed. And I was like, are you kidding me? This guy is out. <laughs> About 30 minutes later, here comes Larry walking in. Oh. He is, do you know what's going on? Oh my gosh, I've been gambling. I've been walking. I've been drinking. I've been doing. <laughs> I was like, you thought this guy had taken some speed or something. And he was just coming in. And we still had to get up to go do our stuff. And he goes, That's I don't right. know. I've got it. We're going to go. Oh my I gosh. Made it. And he made it. I made it. He made it. <laughs> yeah. And then the other one was, <laughs> you know, Helen. Yeah. Yeah. She was not the smoker. What's up, Helen? <laughs> Hello, yeah, Helen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know, because 
in the nightclub you smoke and everyone at that time that was a lot of smoking and everything and yeah. helen always used to give us a hard time she used to give larry a hard time like you need to quit that cigarette you need right. to quit smoking and everything right. you know it's just so bad for you and everything but there was times that you look at her and you're like mm, that's the kettle calling themselves black you know you're kind of looking at like okay so we walked to her room because we had to go we were like for our our thing that we we're supposed to do that next day and we knock on her door you open her door and poof a plume of cigarette right. smoke comes oh, out. Oh, right. And so <laughs> the expression on Larry's face was like, hmm. Oh, I want to jump her shit so bad. <laughs> like you didn't want to even. And I just sat there. And so that was always our inside joke because when we went back, we knew exactly that. And she would complain about the smoke. Oh, this is, I can't stand the smell and everything. Oh, and Larry and I would just look at you each stink. other. You stink. Your clothes stink. You need to quit that cigarette. <laughs> and I'm like, one day it was me, her, and Rachel opening the, the club. And in our back room at the storage room slash employee room there was a man in a women's restroom rachel walks up to me and she's pissed off she's like asshole if you're going to smoke go smoke in the men's room larry not the women's i'm like uh rachel i didn't smoke in the women's room why would i there's two of you and one of me their men's room is open right uh-huh. well why is there smoke in there larry i'm like i don't know rachel and then we both <laughs> turned and looked at helen and i was like yeah we shit and now i'm taking bullets for her you know like like, well, hell, just, I, you know, she, and she was a well endowed woman. She just had that little, the oh, boom boom. They called her boom boom. Yeah. And she just would, you know, kind of shuffle. You know, off. and she was a wonderful woman. She was the mother of all of us. I she loved took, Helen. She took care of us. She Still watched out Helen. after us. And, you know, I haven't seen her. She's popped into my mind a couple of times. And, but, yeah. She worked at JCPenney's for. I remember you telling me. Wow, that. but they closed it down. Uh, that's where I actually caught her smoking. <laughs> <laughs> she had moved to Greeley, and I had moved back to work for Budweiser. And, uh, I had my brand new Explorer, and I was going to the Greeley Mall because this is like 2001. I don't even know. It's been a while. And I pull around the corner, and there she is. And we're in a JCPenney's smoking a cigarette. Yeah, smoke. <laughs> this is my brand new Explorer. I love this car, but I give two shits about its well-being right now. I'm going to park this thing wherever the fuck I can because I, I, I have got it. This is, you know, sorry, baby, but I, daddy finally gets this. You know? So I slam it into a parking space, and I'm, I'm moving my big ass, and, and I go, <laughs> she doesn't even try to hide. She just. <laughs> she, at this point, she's like, fine, you caught me, you happy fucker. You know? Yeah. So, I'm working yeah. at J.C. Penny. Get off me. <laughs> <Get off. laughs> <laughs> this is what the retail business does to me. <laughs> you still stink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, come on, Hells. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Before we get started on this, I have one, one story I was going to tell you. I had an old 81 Mustang in high school. We called it the Stang, right? It was the party wagon. Now, this Mustang saw a ton of action. Right, a ton of action. None of it for me. Right, it was the it was the car. Like when one of my buddies was gonna get lucky, they're like, "Give me the keys." Like, no, <laughs> give me the keys, Larry. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> you know, and I tell them, don't let me find anything in there. I don't want to find Duke because I will, I will hunt you down and hurt don't, you. Don't make me sit in the wet spot. <laughs> right, 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 right. This Mustang was the party mobile. It was it was my, it was the Stang in high school. So we were me, you and Andy were driving around. I think we ended up going to a strip club that night. Right. <laughs> different story altogether and we start talking about our first cars and andy had some japanese model that they don't make anymore i don't remember and i go mine was an 81 mustang troy goes so was mine i go yeah no. i had the spoke hubcaps he's like so did i he goes i had that pulled out pioneer stair i'm like yeah that's what mine had he lived in rocky ford when i had sold my mustang here in fort morgan he ended up with that Mustang oh. in Rocky Ford. It had a slur- the uh, Frosty stain on the back seat. It did. And the uh, Pioneer speakers that Anthony Cordova and I put in, we cut the vinyl to put it in there, but we didn't cut it right. So oh. <laughs> it was all ghetto in there. <laughs> like the little rubber piece kept falling yeah. out. And somehow he ended up with my Mustang. Yep. And that was my first car that I ever owned was a nine, Me was too. an 81 Ford Mustang. Oh it was the gosh. same Mustang. And you don't That's know whatever happened to it, right? Um, we sold it. Dad sold it because I ended up wanting an Explorer, which was the the worst decision I ever made because that Explorer was a piece of shit. Right, right. I remember Fell that. apart and burned up in the Mustang. So they bought, someone bought it, I think, down the street from us. And then they sold it. And the last time I heard is they went and it was ended up at the scrapyard. Oh. I kind of see it and I just kind of reflect on that. Like, man, I should have just kept that car and refurbished it and just fixed it up. And it would have right. been a nice little, it was a good car. I mean, it was, you know, the plastic bumpers you didn't have to worry about. Right. So you did right. any damage to anyone else. And 
but it was that ugly Mustang, mm-hmm. like the 81 mm-hmm. with the hatchback. The little hatchback and, yeah. with the little black things. But the one thing I did like about it, it was, you know, the red velvet seats in there. So if I wanted to sit in bare ass, I'm like, okay, I got this. <laughs> yeah, just, it was really good. Don't turn on the black light. <laughs> just no, don't. Whatever you do, don't come up with the black light. You might see some things you'd be afraid of. Dude, the, the, How did it get there? <laughs> yeah. well, that's true. Huh? I wish I could have that Mustang because I would drive it to my next high school reunion, my 30 yep. year. You know, like, look at Lundstrom, still driving the same car. You know, <laughs> <laughs> winner. Want to get lucky? Yeah. <laughs> it was backfire, like Billy Madison, you know, like, have the Molly Crew blaring, you know. Exactly. Look at me now, bitches. And like, yeah, same as we left you, bitches. You know? <laughs> what was your first car, Josh? Uh, 87 Ford Escort. Okay. GT. GT. Oh, and a spoiler on the back. Yeah, you got the fancy. GT and the spoiler. That's yeah. fancy. It was fancy. Well, <laughs> modest. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We ended up going to the, the strip club that night. and, and uh, That's Andy, a whole new show right there. That's a whole new show. I think I put at least six people through college. Yeah, well, Andy, because uh, Andy <laughs> spent all his money, and then he talked Troy into hitting the ATM with his card and took most yeah. of his money. And I think when I was like, how much is he into you for? You're like, 250. I'm like, Troy, quit giving Andy yeah. money, dude, you know? I don't know if yep. it's just that Andy, we should call him Heath, though, but it's too late. Sorry, Heath, though. Yeah. You know? I know Heath, though, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that one? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it's it, we were, this nightclub we worked at was some of the best memories of my life because it was all guys our age or within four or five years of each other, you know, and kind of ran in a pack and just got in trouble together. And it was it was it was a good good memory. And it was it was for me when I reflect on it, it was like one of my best memories I ever had. Right, it's, it's like when I lived a life a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, that I had just and it's funny because. I was diagnosed with cancer the year, a couple of years before that. Mm-hmm. And so when I moved up there to Pueblo, cause I finished up college there and got hired cause I was working at a radio station. And then uh, one of the sales ladies said, Hey, they are looking for a DJ. And I was like, I've never done this work before. Right. And they're like, go for it. So then I got to meet Mike Ferris, you know, Hey Mike, what's going on? What love, up Mike? Love that man. And, uh, and he taught me some skills. We know Mike. Right. And, uh, ever since that, it was just like, it was a different world. You, you don't know being just a person who goes into a nightclub and you actually work the nightclub and see the experience behind it. But, you know, with Larry and, and uh, Kelly was there and then mm-hmm. Aubrey and, and Helen and Mike and, and just Jared. And, you know, there was tons of people that I remember right. and Annie and all the parties that we had. Yep. I mean, you know, you just you just lived life. It was just fun. Right. Except in this on Wednesday nights when you had to do, which was kind of funny because I hid my secret, you know, when I had to do, you know, the male strippers came through oh that's right that's right had my opportunity to go oil bodies down but i chose not to yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah no it's uh i, used to hate I wanted to send ron <laughs> yeah. you know the dj says yeah. ron they're looking for an oil and rub it out go buddy go yeah. <laughs> what's up ron but uh yeah no that that uh i used to hate when the chippendales would show uh. up because number one, everything was a blender drink, which I did. How, how bad did I hate? How bad did I pitch? Like, well, they'd be like, "Can I get a pina colada?" I'm like, "If you fucking must, I suppose, you know." Because a rum and coke would just be too easy, wouldn't it? You know. But then uh, also, the strippers would come up and get like their cranberry juice or whatever they're drinking, mm-hmm. and they would tip you and be a sweaty dollar. And I'm like, you know what, man? I'm good. Screw rent this month. It's good. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Keep right? keep keep your money yeah. there, champ. Yep. But yeah, it's uh. It was good times, and Mike Ferris was a good boss, and he I was. didn't, I didn't appreciate him at the time. Until, yeah, and, that, and I remember because I was watching when you were talking to Pierre. I yeah. was like, you know, that's a true fact. At the time, when you we were working the business, you know, he was a strict boss. He was really right. hard and challenging. But when you go back and I think about it, he taught me some skills about business right. itself, mm-hmm. how you approach things and how the way he worked things. And you know, and like at the time, I didn't appreciate him, but now I do. Right. And I remember seeing him when. I left and went back to Rocky Ford and lived there for a while. We used to go to um, Christmas and we'd go up to do uh, the, the soup kitchen for Christmas morning. And when I walked in the, at the Union Depot in Pueblo, <clears throat> and who's working? Mike. Mike. I'll be so it was, it was nice to sit, just sit down and catch up with the old times and everything. And, just, and that's when I really, I was like, you know, I, and I told them, I appreciate you because you taught me some things that I never knew that I was capable of sure. and able to do. So He's uh, part of the Chamber of Commerce last I heard in Pueblo, too. He's pretty big on that. My buddy Tim was uh, head of the Pepsi program there, and he goes, I know a guy who met you. A guy knows you. You know, I met a guy. I go, hey, who's that? He's all Mike Ferris. I go, everything he said is bullshit. Just, let's get <laughs> Just so we know. Mike was a great boss, but he'd get, he'd, he drinks Stoli in water. Yep. Right? Oh. And he'd like, just just put a little story in. And I'm like, why don't I just make a thick one until you're drinking 13 of these? You know what I mean? Like, let's, why mess around, you know? Yeah. Keep them hydrated. But he'd get like this close to you. 
and he started talking like this. Hey, man, I'm very passionate about all this, and you need to do a better job, okay? I'm like, you're my bubble, dude, okay? That's, <laughs> that's where we're at right now, you know, but he was a good boss. Oh, he come up to the DJ stand and like, oh. you need to pump it up. You need to get it going, and I'm like, yeah. Mike, we're already there. Get them more packed on the dance floor, and then he'd see it overpacked. All right, kill the floor. I yeah. like you just told us 10 seconds to, to pack yeah, the yeah, dance floor. Yeah. Well, my bars need to be hit. Go. Yeah, yeah, no, so. he, was, he was good. And his dad was old Papa Joe. He was this old <laughs> swinging dick old man. That's what yep. he was. And he always called every waitress dames. Hey, you dames. dames all work here. You know, and he'd oh, flirt with them, hit on them. And he was in a wheelchair. They'd bring him in from the retirement home. And old Papa Joe and uh, and uh, John DeLejo, the uh, the uh, maintenance man and the, the, the day manager. Oh. <laughs> And uh, one day the liquor salesman says, hey, uh, I keep finding, like, joints <laughs> back here. I'm like, those are John's, so it's in your best, is, best interest to leave them alone because John will stab you, dude. I mean, he, you know, he's a good dude, but he'll cut your ass. That's, you know? That's true. Because yeah. don't eat Falcono or fal- fal- Anyway, he was, he was grabbing me. He, he was happy to come do the order. He's like, man, I bet there's a joint waiting for me. Like, he's Santa Claus and it's cookies outside. Like, <laughs> right, you know, right. So, yeah, yeah. it's... Uh, crazy stuff before we get started this uh real quick you're doing the uh you have a new business now you're i actually uh, have two businesses okay. yeah so um i do um the first one is my life coaching i'm right. a mindset coach so i do that now on my own time that's going to be going full-time in that in 2022 nice and then i do uh paparazzi jewelry so i'm, I'm a bling right. boss right i swing some bling i, see it. I, I, I always I always come on and comment you know yeah. what i mean swing some bling and i might have a few beers with me when i see troy <laughs> hawking jewelry he's got his little black glove on and you know what i mean and yep well we had to retire the glove because you know, it got a hole in it and so and then you, you know, need a new one i'm gonna have to get a new black glove i'll, I'll get you a michael jackson glove yeah. buddy. I'm, <laughs> the, the sparkles on it I'll, the rhinestones I'll, I'll find some okay sure. that'll work uh, does, does amazon have it you think i don't know i'll find amazon out amazon has everything uh, well i'm gonna find out i'm gonna buy you two of them because <laughs> i'm not buying one fucking glove you know what i mean so i thought they only come in pairs <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying so. <laughs> showcase with the other hand now troy showcase, showcase with, with the, the other hand. hand yeah that's right so life coach thing is no more teaching going um on. i'm still an assistant principal <laughs> Okay. Still an assistant principal. I'm going to do one, possibly one more year, and that'll be 20 years in. That's crazy, and man. And then I'm like, yeah, I think I'm ready to be my own boss. Right. And do things. and. So life coaching, what's, what's that? So life coaching is just basically a lot of people. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a counselor. But, you know, um, it's just for the, I work with more of the mindset, so I'm not like a nutritionist. I'm not like um, an entrepreneur or business. You know, I'll build on to that as I get more experience down that road. But more aligned, the mindset is just, you know, your attitudes. How mm-hmm. do you prepare yourself for the day? What are you telling yourself? Working on the psychology a little bit behind of, you know, the what we say to ourselves is what we become. Working on the law of attraction. Just, you know, anything's possible. I, that's right. the way I work on it. You know, everything's possible. And so it's just talking with someone saying, I'm stuck in a rut. What can I do? Best part about that is I just ask a lot of questions, and usually they discover the answers. Okay. So how would they find you on this, Troy? Is there a website? So you can find me on my Facebook. You know, you can go to my maiden profile, which is <laughs> Troy Rivera McIntosh. That's my husband's name. We dropped the McIntosh. We, we dropped the McIntosh. That. Okay. We know that. Okay. Uh, you can go there I, on Instagram at mine, uh, mine underscore maven underscore coach. Um, I also have a podcast myself. It's the, mind, it's the Mindset Coach with Troy Rivera. And then, um, and how do they find that? How do they find the podcast? Podcast is on iTunes and Spotify. Okay. So we finally got up and that up and running. And then I have my business page, which is the, uh, Rivera life coaching or it's, okay. yeah, it's Rivera life coaching. So. so if you're interested in that, uh, on the bullhucker.com, this will be episode 21. Mm-hmm. And so we'll have a link for all your stuff on there. And if they, and here's the deal, if they page. tell me that they listen to this podcast and, and, and you, they saw it and everything, I'll give them a free, uh, one hour, one-on-one session with okay, me. Okay, cool. Yeah. We'll put that on there. Bullhucker.com episode 21, Troy Rivera, uh, Macintosh. <laughs> or, I don't know. Sometimes we're keeping it. Sometimes we're not. I don't know. So, <laughs> damn hyphens. We you can know? cut it if we don't need We can it. cut it if we need to. Because yeah. <laughs> that's your married name, correct? My married name is actually Troy Rivera because we didn't want to go spend money on passports and social security cards oh, and everything. Smart. So that's smart. On social media, it's Troy Rivera Macintosh. Okay. Okay. Because it wasn't important enough to spend money on Troy. What's wrong with you? <laughs> we thought about it, but they were like, mm, we, we did the numbers and we're like, mm, just for a name change. Yeah. We decided just to stay with our, our regular names. So he stayed with Macintosh. Yeah, he stayed with just... Macintosh. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, Josh, I'm sorry you've been uh, quiet over here. <laughs> no, hey, I'm good, man. I'm good. <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's fun, Troy, when I get an older yeah. uh, friend I've had for so long. You know, Carrie Kudron was our last episode. And I didn't know Carrie, not as long as you. Yeah. Well, him and I have parted together. Him and his, his wife and I are good friends. So. 
it's always it gets to be kind of a back and forth, you know what I mean? And then uh, this episode runs long as shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> but are you ready to tell some stories? Sure, let's do it. So, if you're new to the Bullhucker, real fast, uh, how this works is Troy Rivera has came on and he has given us three stories. Two stories are true. One story is what we call the Bullhucker. It's a lie. It's a fib. It's not true. Now I'm going to ask you this: the one that is not true is it completely made up? Is it borrowed? Is it? Um, <clears throat> portion of it is fiction. Okay. The one that is the the bull hooker is port a uh, port of its fiction. So, percentage wise, how much is true? I'm probably gonna say percentage wise, about seventy five percent of it is true. So it's just got a little tweak at the end mm-hmm. to, to make it. That's false. how I work, Larry. That's how you work. You want to you want to make us work. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you selfish bastard. Okay. <laughs> so uh, right. at the end of the episode, Josh and I will try to uh, guess the bull hooker. I'll have you know, Josh is two and oh, three and zero. Oh. Two and zero. Uh, two, two and, and zero. zero. Two and zero. Josh is undefeated okay. so Ooh. far. Yeah. Oh, Josh. I uh, I have not looked up my record because it's <laughs> pathetic. So I don't. Uh, <laughs> although we did have uh, Pierre's come up last time with the uh, shot in the eye. That's one of the best. Yeah. <laughs> I was cracking up this yeah, morning yeah. listening to it. Yeah, it's a great episode. So since you're the uh, guest co-host, man, knock it out. Pick a story. Pick a story. Well, I'm going to have to hear about Monkey Attack, honestly. Monkey Attack. Yep. Oh, this is my favorite one. This is my favorite one. So back in uh, 2008, I was, uh, had an opportunity to go to study in India for half a year. And so we went in from January till around March. And it was um, during that time, that's like their warm season. It's like, kind of like their summer and everything. And so at the very end of our studies, we had the opportunity to go up to see the Taj Mahal, so, which is a New Delhi. So we left where we were at in um, Hyderabad and Sagrindabad, which are the Twin Cities. We took the train up, and so we got our hotel and everything. So if you've ever been to India, it is, yeah, it's everything that you see on the TV and then some. So, cool. you know, you think the feedlots are bad out here? I mean, just because of the smells and everything down there, and the, plus the humidity, it's crazy. So we got into our hotel. We started doing some activities, and then we got back that evening, and as we're laying and settling ourselves down, it's myself and two other people who had taken on the adventure to do it. And uh, we get ourselves settled for the night and everything, and we open the window, and, you know, so we get some breeze because it was, you know, hotter than hell there. And we're all sleeping, and you're just all relaxing. I'd say probably about, it was about three hours when we finally started falling asleep, you know, with our sleep. We got into there three hours, and you hear some rustling. And I thought, oh, it's just probably, you know, one of the guys that's with us who's getting up and checking something and everything because it sounded mm-hmm. like someone was, like, digging in the bag. Right. So, but then we noticed I started there, and the other person, I heard some people moving around in the bed, and I was like, something's going on. This is, doesn't sound like, why are they still looking? Mm-hmm. So I got up, and I slowly walked over to the door to flick the light. When I flicked the light, there was a fucking monkey <laughs> in, in, like, in, in Matt's like, desk. In like Matt's a spider bag. monkey? No, or? like I'm talking about a furry monkey with a red <laughs> ass sticking out, okay? <laughs> And so I, you know, when you flick a light on in the middle of the night, you're looking and there's a monkey stealing stuff out of your bag. You're thinking, what, what is going on here? What, what the hell is happening? What was in that curry? <laughs> like, whoa, if I, if I, what was in the drink that I drank? Yeah, that, am yeah, I seeing yeah, things? Yeah. So I, I just yelled, I said, wake up. And the monkey, you know, he, I mean, he's just like, they're straggling and getting things going. He's robbing you. And he's robbing us. I mean, that's what he's doing. He's like digging over out of the bags. And then before you know it, so the guy that's laying there and Matt's next to the bed, which is his bed that's he's sticking through, digging through, he starts throwing stuff at us because, you know, he's, it's, it's a defense mechanism. Right, right. Let's just start getting it. So, I mean, so we're trying to catch him to, get, you know, what to do. Like, what do you do when a monkey's like in the middle of the night Jesus. robbing you? You wake up to this. What, do you cage him? Do you get a leash and say, make him your best friend? I mean, I don't know. So we're like trying to get him out. And finally, he goes out to the window. So we go downstairs and we tell the, the person at the front desk at the hotel. And we're like, you know, we just got a monkey and everything. And they're like, did you open the window? And I was like, well, yeah. And everything it says, did you not read the sign next to the window? <laughs> and there's a, no lie. There's a sign that says, do not open these windows because monkeys will come in. Beware of monkey attacks. Beware of the monkey attacks, the kind of situation. Oh, so and I was like, oh. So, you know, I mean, there's no fan. There's no air conditioning whatsoever. So by right. right when the window, there's a sign that says, do not open the windows because potential monkey attacks. <laughs> and we had our experience of one. You stupid medicans. <laughs> That's free. And it's hard to talk to them because you're like, you're, you're sitting there processing like, really, this is happening? Did they just tell us not to open the window because <laughs> right. it's true? Right. Because you see it when you go down to downtowns and when you're walking right. and you're going to the, like, the tourist place and everything, they tell you, don't, if a monkey comes up and grabs your camera, just let the monkey take the camera because they'll come in, they'll come in groups after you. So if you go to chase one, they're going to follow you and they'll come in and they'll attack you. So they really? said, so if they take your $4,000 camera, well, you know, have fun. Do you think they're trained to steal? 
I don't know. There's a lot. There's a Did lot that goes the, on. The one with the baby. No. Yeah, a couple of maybe a year ago, maybe not quite a year ago. Uh, it was a, a security footage, and this guy rolls up on a motorcycle, uh, drops the monkey off. The monkey rolls up to the table, grabs the baby, and starts dragging the baby down the street, like stealing the baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I don't, you know, I would imagine. I mean, the Australians had a dingo ate my baby, <laughs> and the Indians are like, they stole mine. So. Right. <laughs> At least you know it's gone, you know? <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy video, man. That's crazy. Yep. What do you think? I, 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 I want to believe it for sure. That one I hope is true. Like you say that the, the ones that you hope is true, that yeah. one is the one I hope is true. <laughs> There's always stories that I do hope are true. So <laughs> last episode I got my wish, so it was a true yep, story. Yep. So um, I like it, but uh, it's always hard to guess on the first story. you got to mm-hmm. have something to compare with. So yeah. uh, it's a good story, though, Troy. It's a good story. <laughs> I'm trying to remember if I ever heard of you going to India, though. That was in 2008, so that yeah. was after I left. Yeah, we had we had the peppers. We had, yeah, it's crazy. Okay, well, I ugh, Canadian winter storm is the story I want to hear next, Troy. All right, so Canadian winter storm. You think storms here in Colorado are like crazy, you know? So we went out for Christmas in 2017. I think it was 2017. We decided to go, and my mother-in-law and my husband, we decided to drive down to Windsor in Canada and to go visit some family and. We rented the car, you know, and they have this, they didn't have snow tires because I'm too cheap to put snow tires when I get a rental. Sure. And so we decided to go, great weather going, everything. And then on our way back after we spent Christmas and visiting with family, coming back and driving up. And they've been in the winter before, so they know how to drive in winter in Canada, right? And I'm right. like, oh, what are you talking about? I'm from Colorado. You know, we know how to drive in winter too. <laughs> sure. And sure. everything they said, no, this is not like the winters in Colorado. Right. So, you know, I was like, whatever, bullshit. So we're driving and going from there. And so we park at one of the um, off ramp kind of places and get like our food and, and get some gas and everything and getting ready. And we get back on the road. And so we're on our way and we get out of Toronto. We start heading north because uh, the family lives up three hours of north of Toronto. And so when we're driving up there, all of a sudden I'm like, it's night's coming down. The sun's disappearing. And all, it's just like a sheets of white snow just coming. Right. And, you know, and I start getting white, white knuckles. Yeah. I'm sweating, you know. Yeah, it sucks. My butthole's, like, just tight because right. I don't want, right. I'm like, I'm in pain. Right. Because my body is so stiff and you're, everything. You're, your ass is red <laughs> like that monkey's. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so my mother-in-law sitting in the back. My husband shuts off the radio. And I'm like, why are we shutting off the radio? You know, well, you can focus on the, on the thing. I don't need silence because, you know, I can't, yeah, I can't drive that worse. way. Yeah. And so my mother-in-law, she's just real cool and she's relaxed. She's like, do you want me to drive? And I'm like, no, I've got this. I've got this. No. <laughs> and then I'm following the snow plows. And that's one thing that's different when you're driving in Colorado is like, you know, the snow plows, when they're double, they, you never really see them double next to you side by side each other. Mm-hmm. And in Canada, they are. So because they're working together, so they're going to slow traffic behind because it's about at the safety and we're pushing through it. And I mean, we're talking about good good snow drifts on the side of the road wow. i mean and i kept you know i'm nervous as it is already just driving and they're telling me okay stay here do this and you know they're guiding me through it and my mother-in-law she's like are you sure you don't want me to drive and i'm like no i've got this i'm okay <laughs> you know and right, i'm like right. bearing it out and the one thing they told me is don't follow the snow plow because you when they they go a certain section and then they're going to veer off so here i am and all of a sudden i'm just you know as like narrow driving right that i get you know, and I'm paranoid. I'm trying to watch the road and I already have bad eyesight as it is at night when I'm driving. I'm like this, just staring, going. And then you see me and myself going like this. And they're like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm following the snowplow. They're like, don't follow the snowplow. <laughs> I'm like, I can't. It's like, it's like, you know, <laughs> you're tuned in to just go with it. Because the thing is, is that where they turn off on, I have to get off the off ramp. The off ramp hasn't been cleared. Ah. Uh. You know, and you're so horrible. I'm you're horrible. horrible. You're horrible I am, at following the advice. You don't I'm, read signs. <laughs> you follow snow plow. I'm sorry. I've that. been told that. Yeah. yeah. I've been told that yeah. even on a regular daily basis. Yeah. Like, didn't you read the sign? Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. a sign. I was supposed to read something. Yeah. yeah. Did she tell her son, like, <laughs> your husband needs to become literate. That's going to help. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to be so much better in life if his ass learns how to read. You know, I'm just going to say I've been, that. Yeah. It's about, it's, when you drive with me, it's always an adventure. So. <laughs> That was like the, the one thing, and I always tell them that that's my bucket list. I told them because I kept, they kept saying, why aren't you going to let us drive? We'll drive for you. We know how to, the conditions are. We'll take over. And I was right. like, no, this is on my bucket list. I don't know why I'm saying this, but this is on my bucket list. And I'm going to be able to tell people that I, had a, I was able to drive in a Canadian winter storm. Right, right. And we made it through. And I mean, I tell you, that day when I, that evening we got home, what would have usually been about maybe a five-hour drive took us about eight hours to get back to where sure. we needed to be. Oh, sure. I drive a truck for a living on a milk truck, so... Uh 
I, I hear the uh, winter storm thing. It sucks. And then the areas that they went in the caverns, I mean, not the caverns, but it's like the little dips in the valleys. I mean, you, it's just plain black when it's dark and you just have your headlamps right. and snow. And there's nothing out there, right? There's nothing, there's out, nothing there. out there. It's like going down I-80 in Wyoming, just nothing yeah. for miles, you know? Except for trucks. Except for Except trucks. Except for trucks. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy how many trucks are on oh, there. Oh, my gosh. It? Yes. Have you been down I-80 in Wyoming? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's like for every regular car, there's 18 trucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they control the highway. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, driving a truck sometimes when the snow starts coming at you, like like you're the Millennium Falcon ready to jump with the high. That messes with your eyes so mm -hmm. much. It's 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 gonna be scary. You just gotta. I just stare at the little white line going down the highway. The biggest fear is like when we finally it's when it's close to the double road. You know when the trucks pass and that snow just hits you like that. But that's um, we were on a two lane going it, so it separates out into the area and just just the snow just coming out and from the cars passing you. You know, and it's just parent, and you're just trying. And I'm like, I'm the worst driver. I will admit, hi, I am a worst drive right. when it comes to when it comes in weather, especially snow. I can't do it. I, and, I know I need to do it. And your husband's family is from that area, so they yeah. So they already knew. They already knew the conditions. They were, you know, instead of listening, right, and being not being stubborn, right, take their advice. I was trying to prove them wrong because you know, and then, that, and then the funny thing is, like you Americans, <laughs> so prideful. <laughs> We are. This is stubborn. <laughs> and, I, and, you know, I'm like, no, I'm not. And I'm like, if you would just follow the advice, it would have been okay. Right, right. But how many times do you drive by, as Colorado guys, oh. a California plate in the ditch, and you're like, dumbass, you know? Oh, man. <laughs> Go back yep. to Texas, idiot. <laughs> right. It was no laughing matter what happened to Texas with that, that lizard, you know? Oh, yeah. That was very horrible. But before I knew it was bad, I got to laugh. But like, don't mess with Texas unless you're two inches of snow. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, my cousins live in Arizona, live in uh, Nevada. Yeah. They live outside Las Vegas in North mm -hmm. Las Vegas. And they told us the day that Las Vegas had the snow, the whole entire t town shut down. And I'm like, yeah. you guys didn't get a lot of snow. They're like, we have one snow plow. Mm -hmm. And it, you don't think about that. I was like, oh, and she goes, we only have one snow plow that no one ever uses and it got used that day no one knew how to turn on the snow plow and I was gonna we, say, how do you lower how, how do you lower the plow? shovel no <laughs> like the plow part how do you do this because she doesn't so everyone they shut down the entire town because no one knew how to drive in <clears> snow they gave the army of elvis impersonators all shovels and like, <laughs> right how <laughs> <laughs> burn snow. snow how come burn snow <laughs> <laughs> then in they my charge, blue shoes and then they charge people admission to watch this shit like it's <laughs> exactly, a part of a show like, exactly <laughs> okay. they keep the Indian dudes that are handing out the cards right. give them some shovels right, man right. Right. exactly <laughs> you remember the people handing out the cards <laughs> yeah Troy was Troy was super like curious oh, about oh, it oh yeah and uh, <laughs> as he said, uh, whenever we passed an alcohol stand, I drank it. <laughs> so I uh, remember you wanted to know what they were. And I'm like, well, I'm going to help you out. You're my friend. So I got a bag and I just walked up and said, load daddy up. You know what <laughs> I mean? And, oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. And I, I said, who's going to look down? <clears throat> people handing the smut out? Is that mm -hmm. what's going to be like? Pervert. <laughs> take that weirdo, you know? But it's funny to watch people walk by because you, you can see that they want to take it. Oh, yeah. But then they don't because right. you're thinking, like, what are people going to think about when taking it? And here's Larry just dumping in the bag. Just yeah, dumping in yeah. the bag. Just dumping in the bag. I want options. <laughs> yeah. This is pre internet, man. You know, I'm like, are you kidding me? They're having free porn out here, you know? I can take my beer down the street. I saw some girl naked for nothing. I mean, jeez. I'm staying here. Scoop Pueblo, you know? This place is amazing. I've been back like six times, you know? Oh, my God. Yeah, so. Have you been back to Vegas since? Um, yeah, we've. Got, we, there was one time I think it was before the pandemic hit us. There was one year that we went at least five times that year. Oh wow! Oh, man. You to and Vegas. husband, or? yeah, me okay. and my husband. And so we're funny. actually getting ready to go on here in August to uh, the the jewelry business that I do. There's a convention there in okay, August, cool. so we're going up there. Paparazzi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it costume stuff? Or is it? Well, they call it costume jewelry. Okay. You know, it's it's the same same products of costume jewelry, but it's just not you know no lead and no nickel. So. Okay. I mean, it's five dollars. I mean, you can't go yeah. wrong. But yeah. people are about it. It's 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 really some high quality stuff. I mean, I like it, but nope. I don't wear it because it needs to be sold. Okay, got a boy. So I look at it. I have my stash. Trust me, I have my stash. Yeah, but I'm not, I've never been a jewelry guy. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I uh, I like the rings. That's one thing. I like the rings yeah. because when I get, you know, drink a lot of water and have a little too much, my fingers swell, so it goes with the band. Sure. The only time I ever wore one was I bartended. I wore a thumb ring. I remember that. Because it could hook onto the beer bottles. Oh. Because you bartend, you start getting like a, a gash in your hand from opening beer bottles. So that's why I started wearing a thumb ring. And I liked it. And it was the 90s. So I got I got away with it, you know. Yeah. And I had a Bronco pinky <laughs> ring that I wouldn't wear oh, for geez. love or money nowadays. <laughs> like nice pinky ring, Larry, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't judge me, you bastards. But uh, I get my coke. <laughs> <laughs> It was a gold. It was a gold Bronco pinky ring. Well, I think it was a, a girl's ring, but Aubrey found it. And she's like, "Here, take this. You know, look yep. what I found for you." And I'm like, "Well, thank you, Aubrey." And I mean, fits on Daddy's pinky, <laughs> just it perfectly. On, it fits on Shrek's pinky. So that's where I'm gonna wear it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, I like the uh, I like the snow story. Okay. Yep, what yep. do you think? I think that one's real. Yeah. Yeah. I would. I have a definite one in mind. Already. Uh, already. Oh, man. <laughs> so, all right. Well, Story number three. Story number three. Let's hear about the State Patrol car. So this involves the 1981 Ford Mustang. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. This is where it happens. The Stang, baby. The Stang. And, and so it, it preferences the idea that about the, the plastic bumper. <clears throat> so it was a couple, it was like two days after my birthday. And I think it was my 19th, I think it was my 19th or 20th birthday. I can't remember. It was one of those birthdays. And, uh. I'm always late to everything. <laughs> Surprise. Um, Me too. And so, <laughs> Me too. I always just tell people that they're early. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. was on time. You were just early. I'm fashionably, fashionably late. Fashionably late. And so I got up that morning and I was going to college at Otero Junior College in Lahana, mm-hmm. you know, and I had to get to work on time and it had snowed. And I tell you, my, my best adventures are when it snows. And so mm-hmm. it had snowed that night before. And, you know, and, and my dad's always told me, you know, you need to leave earlier because there's going to be potential black ice on there. You never can judge it. Even though it looks like it's snow, there's still the ice under there. And so I was like, oh, whatever. You don't know anything, Dad. You know, I'm, I'm invincible. I'm old. I'm younger. Yeah. I, I'm, I've got this. I've got this. So I go to the store to go put gas. I go in and I get me a cup of, you know, a cup of cappuccino and just loving it. And I was looking at the clock and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm actually on time today. You know, things are going well. <laughs> I spoke too soon. Yeah, knock on So wood. I get in the car and start driving off. And if you know anything about the Ford Mustang, it's a front wheel drive. So, mm-hmm. you know, anything slippery in the back, you're going to fishtail. So well, was it? I thought it was a rear wheel. I'm pretty sure no, it was a rear wheel. It was yeah. a rear wheel. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah, it was yeah, a back wheel yeah, drive. That's yeah. the one. Okay. And so going down the highway, I'm going and I have my, med- it's like, it's so weird because that morning I had the cup of coffee of cappuccino and then it's like on the radio, you know, the pioneer radio was playing well and it's had some great music. It was like, all my great songs were coming on. I was like, yeah, this is, shit, yeah, this is a great morning already. I'm starting, you know, I'm on time. Yeah. Got my cup. I'm got my music. So as I'm heading outside of swing, um, hitting, getting ready to enter swing, sorry, getting ready to enter swing. There is um, a feedlot right there. It's the Higby feedlot. And, this Jeep, this car in front of me started to slow down, all right? And because there was a lot of people, as we started, as I was going, there's a lot of people that had veered off into the ditch bank and they had, you know, plummet themselves there. California and, plates. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, I'm not going to be one of those. Right. I said, that's what I kept right. saying. I'm not going to be one of these people. Right. The car in front of me decided to slow down. So I started to slow down. And then this Jeep just came just came by, right? This Jeep Cherokee just started coming by. And I was like, okay, this car's going a little too slow for me. I'm looking at the, the speedometer and I'm like, I think it's around about 25, 30 miles per hour. It's like, okay, I got this. So as I put the blinker on, I'm going in with the car, come in here. And then as soon as I gotten into the passing lane, the Jeep Cherokee decides to push its brakes. And so when I did that, I caught it just at the last minute, you know, an instant panic, which I've been told you're not supposed to push on the brakes immediately. Sure. Just, tap it and then just go from there i had put a little too much pressure on the brake and all of a sudden i just lost the control of right. the car and so i, I saw myself going and then all the cars like they just moved out of the way it's like they did a grand opening for me they're like let him wreck he's with <laughs> let it. Him wreck. let's just pull to the side pull out the popcorn and pop kids watch this this is what you do not do <laughs> yeah. in snow I, all of a sudden i just start getting in the car just starts going and my dad, and I remember my dad just uh, all of a sudden, his magical Yoda spirit just appeared and says, remember, go with the, with the, the curve, you know, go T- turn into go the slide, with, turn into the slide, right? right? So right. you can gain control. And I was like, okay, Yoda. And so as I'm driving, I did, I got it. Connect was like, okay, yes, I did it and everything. And then it decided to shift on me because I had hit another <laughs> patch of, of ice. It shifted. So now I went this way. And as I'm coming, it's picking, it's going in the speed. I'm like, oh shit, I don't know what to do. Dad, what do I do? And of course, nothing was being there anymore. It came and it curved. And as I curved, all I know is I saw a state patrol car parked on the side. The lights were not on. It was, he was helping a gentleman in the front who had fallen. He had wrecked into the bank. Coming in there, going, and I'm like, oh God, please, no, God, please, no, let me hit him. Don't let me hit him. And I've never seen a, a state patrol officer just like jump to the side of the road that quick. Right. Right. And I'm like, oh, God, oh, God. And then I just, boom, just came in, smeared off his state patrol 
medallion or whatever the, the sticker is on the car, smeared it, <laughs> took out this, this passenger door in the backside to spun around. And as I get in, hit the side of the, right across from a Higby feedlot oh, right wow. there, get in. Right. Right. And so I'm pretty smart when it comes to things. I'm trying to push the door open and the door's stuck. Right. And I'm panicking. Mm -hmm. So everything, my entire world, I started crying. I started talking about how my college, I'm not going to be able to finish college. Um, I'm, my insurance is going to go up. Dad's going to kill me. Right. And now I'm going to die in this car because I can't get out while the passenger door is just flung right open. You know, it's, I mean, it's just there and everything. And, right. and so when we get out, you know, we go from there. So the police officer, the state patrolman takes me in and he's like, I need you to write down your statement. So, you know, what happened? He's like, you were going pretty fast there. I was like, no, I wasn't. I was going the regular speed. I said, and this Jeep came behind and everything. He says, you were going pretty fast right there. And everything. He says, you know, he goes, this car only has 1,500 miles on it. He says, I just got it. Oh, no. no. Oh, man. It's a Do brand new cruiser. Exactly. Don't ever be a smart ass to the state patrol. I was like, well, then can I take it home? Because now I'm going to pay for this anyways. It's going to be my car. Can I take it home? And he goes, young man. <laughs> now's not the time <laughs> might get you a free ride if you want <laughs> he didn't yeah. even offer that he's no. like do we need to call assistance <laughs> i wanted to say can i just take my car home now yeah, you know right right so that was that was the the state patrol and i've always told people that i was going to title this one as like you know my state patrol car that i own it yeah but so you ended up paying for it i ended up paying him and he was a sergeant oh, on wow. staff too so oh, no. I hate to bring it to you. That's not the first time the Mustang's been wrecked. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> there's not a muffler but on it we, for a we reason. Took, we took it home and not, not a single damage to it at all. Really? Yep. Didn't even. And where it hit in the front, it just scraped the bumper. But like I said, the bumper was plastic and it just didn't scrape. Yeah, it was it that just, fiberglass. It's that yeah. fiberglass and didn't damage it or anything. My car went away pretty good. The right. Mustang, it was like yeah, I, uh, that rear wheel drive. Cause they don't make them anymore like that. Thank God. Uh, there was a couple of friends. I'll, I'll call them out: Charity Andrews, you know, and, <laughs> and Angie. Uh, they were younger than us. It was me and Anthony Cordova, and we were out on a dirt road, and I was going to teach them how to drive clutch because it was a stick. And they don't want to do it, and you know, I'm trying to show off, right? I'm, no, no, I'll teach you how to drive a stick. It's fine. So we get on the dirt road, and I'm trying to teach them, and they pop the clutch. Well, what happens? And we, we, you start fishtailing, mm -hmm. right? And they're taking off. We go down a hill into a farmer's field, right? And this is, I love my car, you know? And we stop, and I'm gathering myself. The anger is building in me, and all I can hear is the radio. <laughs> Poop, there it is. Poop, there it is. Upside down and inside out. I'm just, I'm not fighting my rage. And, and, and Angie is just, she's just like shaking, like, what just happened? And I'm like, now what? Because the, the car had no balls. Mm -hmm. It was a four banger. It was not even a yeah. cool Mustang. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's freaking out. I'm like, just, 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 just get out. We need to get this out of the cornfield, you know? And I can't get it up that hill. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to go up the hill. Tony's like, well, I'll get it out of the cornfield, Larry. <laughs> and I'm like, well, how are you going to do that, Anthony? And he's like, let me drive. Drives through this dude's cornfield. <laughs> right? <laughs> Just, Smokes the yeah. Corn. <laughs> makes his own little alien. <laughs> like, he <laughs> drives it through. We're going back to town. There's corn stalks everywhere. No more muffler, by the way. <laughs> Muffler's gone. I don't know. You know. So we get out of the cornfield, and I'm, I'm laughing. It's my senior year that year. This is the summer before my senior year. And we're in study hall, and uh, I'm laughing with my buddy Jason Moss. What's up, Jason? <laughs> and uh, he's like, "Where?" It? He's telling me what the story. And the voice behind me goes, "Yeah, that corn fills out by Pawnee, blah 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 blah." Exactly where it was. I turn back, and it's it's Todd. And yeah, he goes, "That was my dad's field." <laughs> <laughs> like Angie was driving. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad how quick I snitch, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Mustang seen some. Uh, yeah, it's seen, it's seen some days, dude. I was not responsible as a child. Let's just say that. So, yeah, <laughs> it went. It went. Through, it it lasted. It was a good car. It was a good car. It was it was fun. It was like I said. I'd like to have it. Although it was that uh, ugly model of Mustang, you know, the uh, late seventy, early eighties. It was not. <laughs> and when I told body. people, and you know, when I went to school, I remember that time. I was like, yeah, I got a Mustang. They're like, oh, what kind is it? You know, and they were labeling the the nice ones right. that yeah. everyone likes. And I was like, oh, no, it's not that. It's even better. You know, because I want to try to sell it up. Right, right, right. I was like, it's even better. So they all went outside. And they're like, oh, it's that one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's technically a Mustang. <laughs> and I said, well, it's a Mustang, right? It didn't. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it's got the little sticker but on it the didn't, back. They didn't, so. <laughs> they didn't complain when they wanted to ride. They were yeah. like, oh, and now the Mustang was popular. Exactly, yeah. mm-hmm. right. I think I fit like 20 people on that one day. It oh was it was nuts. God. We had Yeah, we tried to go over a speed bump at school. And that's uh, <laughs> that's why it had you know, marks on the bottom where the sparks shot out everywhere. Yeah, I did not take care of that vehicle. It was, <laughs> yeah. Because you called it your Black Beauty. I called it my Black Beauty. Yes, yeah, I was going to ask you if you remember what I called it. Yeah, yeah. It had the, the little Black red Beauty. pinstripe down the side mm-hmm. and spoke. <laughs> Oh, and another good feature of that car was uh, the passenger right tire. The spoke hubcap would just come off. Remember that? <laughs> it would just pop up. Yeah, it would just pop out and start rolling down the street. <laughs> oh. It chased a kid on a bike for half a block one time. Just ding, 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 ding. This little shit was pedaling faster. You know what I'm like, a, like a photon torpedoes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, and it didn't matter what you did to it, it would always come off. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd try to bang that thing on. It, yeah, it, it, I'd stop sometimes and it would just keep going. I'm like, God damn And then when we got it, the driver's seat was broken. So you were more like a low rider, you know. That's because a fat guy over there, <laughs> Troy. I mean, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> so my dad, you know, we said I need a new seat, and so we went to the junkyard. While we found another similar mu- Mustang, and you know, the guy was talking was red velvet seat. We had to make sure that the seats were the same of color. Course, of course. But this time it was the passenger seat. So my dad, oh. you know, he's pretty creative. He's like, we can put that in there. I was like, Dad, that's no, we can't do that. We've got to go find another one. Right. He goes, Well, why do you need it? So well, what if I want to pull my stuff in? Because you don't need to do that. He says, you're driving. You don't need to do that. There's no need for it. So <laughs> we replaced the seat. And so if you ever wanted to pull to make the seat back, you had to dig your hand and scrape it. In it between. comes out bleeding because you yeah. had to get the handle. Right. A couple of knuckles were gone because you had to pull the little lever just to get the, the back seat. The, right. the back how'd your seat, seat belt work? It just worked the same. It, the thing because it was on the side, so it yeah, didn't it go into the chair. Well, Oh, so it wasn't attached to the seat back. No, no it wasn't oh. attached to the seat back. Well, it's an eighty-one Mustang. Well, okay, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, man, that was. I'm and so when you try, to, and so when you try to tell some people like if they wanted to drive, they're like, yeah, I'll do it. And they're like, well, how do I roll it back? You're just gonna sit like that. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's my seat. <laughs> no it to one me. touches it. No uh, one touches uh, it. Right. Uh, it blew me away that day we were driving and we had the same car, man. It was the frosty stain. I think they gave it away <laughs> perfectly. Oh, and the Pioneer. I got that my sophomore year. That Pioneer stereo. Do you remember, Josh, when you had to pull the whole stereo oh, out? Yeah. Oh, it was yeah. like a little suitcase you carry everywhere. Oh, and it was, thought, a, it was a status thing, man. Yes, you pull yes. it out and you oh, go to class man, carrying you know? your stereo, man. Yeah, 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 you come out. I used to get at home. I'd pull it out, and I'd be walking on top of the world, <laughs> the pyramid of life. I wanted the tape neighbors deck. to see. It was a tape, tape deck. deck. Tape deck. Right, a tape deck, and I wanted the world to see. Yeah, yeah, and right. my mom comes in. I remember one time I walk up the stairs, and she goes, do you know you're not popular? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at her like, what do you mean? She goes, you have your whole stereo in your hand. You're not popular. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, talk about an easy, you know, bubble burst. Boom. Go for it there. Right. right. But yeah, that was, yeah. And you, you just took it out. You had fun with it. Hold on a second, Uh-oh. Troy. Well, Josh is falling apart. It's the ghost, there. man. Yeah. It's the other. Hold on. Oh, oh. You're standing there. It just fell off. I know. By the way, this place is supposed to be a little haunted, Troy. So. Oh, welcome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> welcome. Yeah. I'm open. I'm free. Anytime. <laughs> there you go. But now, so the thing is, and you did, you felt on top of the world when you just you worked, came with that whole system. I worked at the Wendy's here and uh, in high school, and like four or five guys had it, so they'd stack them on each other, you know, in the back <laughs> office, you know, you had to hide it in the office, and so nobody stole your stereo, oh, yeah. you know. And yeah, I remember that was my big present as a sophomore, dude, and I couldn't be more happy for it, you know. When I graduated high school, I got a VCR. I was like, man, I'm spoiled, <laughs> I'm man. Living I, it up, man. I feel like I'm one of the Rockefellers over here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the VCR, mom. By the way, it was very kind. It was very thoughtful. So, uh, well, those are good stories, Troy. I liked them. So, it's been fun catching up. Sorry, Josh. You <laughs> yeah. Got... Hey, man, I'm along for the ride. I'm along for the ride. <laughs> so, do you have a? Do you have one in? I, I do have one. You have one. Yeah, I'm I think feeling so. pretty confident. I think so do I. So, I think so. Um, before we do it any further, I'm going to say one more time. Bullhucker.com is our web address. Please check us out at thebullhucker.com. If you go on YouTube, make sure you like the video. Make sure you hit subscribe and hit the little bell icon so it'll show you when we have new videos that come up Ding. every Tuesday. Ding. Um, if, you're wanted, if you're listening to it on any platform, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, whatever, please subscribe to the podcast. Help us out. And like I said, hit the like button. It's a small click for you, but a big click for us, you know, yeah. so we can get the... Uh, podcast up and running and share it on social media do whatever you want to do and if you want to leave your comment on what you thought it was be honest see if you get this one right so 
because we don't make you wait a week anymore. We used to make people wait a week, but I don't know if that was working out for us. So uh, <laughs> Find out right now. <laughs> yeah, we're going to try it. Troy, how do you paper, rock, scissors? Oh, I'm glad you brought that up because I was thinking the paper, rock, paper, scissors, we just one, two, three, shoot. So Troy is a my dirty... husband will My husband will go one, two, shoot. So it, it's a... That's... That's the argument we have at home. He's like, no, it's one, two, shoot. And I'm like, no, I've been taught it's one, two, three, shoot. So what it comes down to is Troy's a dirty four pumper. <laughs> and we're three pumpers. We're three pumpers here. Yep. Okay. Yep. So. <laughs> Good for you, Macintosh, by the way. Okay. <laughs> What's your husband's name, by the way? Cody. Cody, okay. Cody. Let's call him Macintosh. I'll forget that. Okay, ready? Ready. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Got me on this. <laughs> So I finally get, I finally win one, you know, <laughs> I'm the one who thought of this podcast of all the equipment. I got it all set up and I'm the worst one at every aspect of this podcast. <laughs> it's, the, it's the shits, man. I'd bring different guests on now and they're all better than me to all of it, you know? So, all right, Mr. Finley, we got three stories. We got monkey attack, state patrol car and Canadian winter storm. Yep. All right. What do you think? Well, I really want Monkey Attack to be real. That's the one I I feel like. Uh, yeah. That that's that's just something that, uh, too good to be true almost, but it is true. I hope. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. Um, Canadian Winter Storm. Uh, I, I would believe that. I would believe that. I know a couple of Canadians that uh, <laughs> probably would have loved to drive for you, mm-hmm. so I could see that. But the. Uh, the, the state patrol, I have to, I, I, I'm leaning to that one. I'm, I'm thinking that's the one just because of, of the story of the Canadian patrol and how you were scared. And, and that day, it's, if you're scared, you're scared all the time, I think. So there's that day when he said, everything's working good. My tunes are on. I'm feeling good. <laughs> I have a, a, that's, that's where I think I caught you slipping. So I'm, I'm hoping that's where I, I the, the truth is in the detail. So I'm going to go with the state patrol as the, as the hucker. Okay. I like it. This is weird because uh, this doesn't happen very often, but I'm going to agree with you. No. Uh, no. I like the monkey attack. I hope it's true. If it's not true, I'll be sad. <laughs> I like the, the idea of a red-ass monkey. Uh, stealing my stuff. Stealing you and just indignantly <laughs> looking at you like, what are you looking at? You know what I'm saying? I'm you sorry. left the window open. What, <laughs> is man? Is this your deodorant? I'm sorry. It was your deodorant, okay? I got a smelly-ass monkey I got to live with. Uh the Canadian winter storm, yep, uh, short and sweet, but uh, I, I believe that. Uh, the reason I'm going to take the state patrol car is because we shared a Mustang, and when you lost control, you thought it was front-wheel drive at first. I had to correct you on that. And if you've ever had a rear-wheel drive <laughs> car, that's what you will notice. That's the first thing is you will slide. That thing was horrible in the winter. It was horrible. Oh, it, was. it was any rear-wheel drive. That's why they don't do them anymore, do they? Oh, yeah. Do they do rear wheel oh, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a... Uh, Explorer did it for actually the brand new Explorer just went back to rear wheel drive. Really, mm-hmm. predominantly they, they do an all wheel drive. Yeah, <laughs> stupid. But. That's the one thing I hate about that car. So I am going to take that one too. So either uh, Troy's going to kick both our asses, or Troy's going to be the third one we both beat. So Troy, whip that bad boy out. All right, you ready for this? Yep. Oh, oh yeah, no! Oh no! Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Get out, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> the monkey attack. Damn it. Uh, I went with the thought process that that's a pretty outrageous story. So that was a, that was a, the bait mm. to go after. <laughs> God damn. So, but you said part of it was true. Part of it was true. So what part? The part of it, uh, the monkey coming in the window was not true. Okay. But the, because we did have a monkey that was outside knocking on the window because the windows were closed. So, so we... The thing is, when we got into the hotel, the gentleman told us, whatever you do, don't open your windows. We know it's hot right now because of the humidity and the seasons you're in, but please do not open the window. You'll see that there's a sign that says do not open the windows because in in case, beware of the monkeys. He said, because if you open it up, even if you put a small crack on it, he says, they're going to push it open and they're going to come in. So it was around like three o'clock in the morning when I heard this, because I was right by the bed, my bed was right by the window. You heard just tapping. And when you turn on the light and you open it, there's, there's the monkey looking in because it's trying to get in because they're just jump around everywhere and they're around the windows. How big is this monkey? Like pounds? We're well. talking about the monkeys around about this big. So it's oh, four man. foot tall? So it's about four foot tall. No shit. And it's like, I mean, you open the win- you open the curtain and you see it. It's just right there looking at it. And it's like, you know, it's like, hey, I'm trying to get in. It's like, let me in. I, you know, you guys have some good stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if we want that. Everybody likes monkeys. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 the, thing, and the truth is, like the, the sign's right there. It says, do not open the windows because, you know, beware of the monkeys because the guy told us downstairs. Wow. So we can follow the rules. Yeah, you can follow the rules. <laughs> but then it makes you nervous. You're laying there like, 
was it latched enough? And I'm by the bed, and if that thing gets in, I'm going to make it out. If it breaks the window, now it's got glass shards as a weapon. <laughs> that's what, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. What's, what's a monkey, you know, not too much different than us and monkeys, dude. Although bust I, that window out. Well, I don't know, Josh. It was you and I in that hotel room, and that monkey breaks in, and I've been drinking. I've been like, I might fight that monkey, you know? I, I got five on the monkey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> make it ten. I'm not a great fighter, you know? <laughs> They have opposable thumbs and can <laughs> climb very well. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm not fighting a monkey. I'd, I'd punch it right in the red ass to begin with. That's what the first thing I do, just to see what would happen. You know. Well, and this is this is something I heard on the Joe Rogan podcast. But I've heard when they attack, they actually go for genitals. Mm-hmm. That's really? one thing that they because that's that's part of their dominance. So they want to they grab or punch, uh, <laughs> grab and punch. I've heard. Jeez. Yeah. So. <laughs> I wouldn't want that because no. the, the monkey grabs me. Now it feels bad for me too. It's like, oh. Now I've been molested and beat up. <laughs> and it's like, oh, oh, oh poor guy. You know, how pathetic is that? Uh, about oh. Jack, I uh, brought up Papa Jack. He told me, he talked about Vietnam every now and again, right? Mm-hmm. And he told me when his 18th birthday is when he got flown into Vietnam parachuted into the jungle and he got parachuted into a batch of spider monkeys that's why i asked if he was oh, a spider monkey no. and i guess how they defend themselves is they shit in their hand and they throw it at you <laughs> so there's 18 year old jack roar landing in a parachute and just getting pelted with monkey shit I, you try not to laugh at it you know what i'm saying but it, it, jack was like as tall as that monkey four foot tall uh, he looked like Yosemite Sam. Yeah, okay. right. He had the, the big. He's the one I bought the the sunbird from. We talked oh, about on okay. last yeah, episode. Yeah. Yep. And uh, he passed away. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. We lost Papa Jack. Do you know where he's buried? No, I do not. I'd like to find out. I'd go. He's the one that introduced me to Yukon Jack. No. Um, but yeah, no, he, Larry introduced me to uh, your favorite one was um, the wild turkey chased by was it something was chased by a wild turkey i can't remember it was oh, a drink and then the three bastard sons chasing there the wild turkey. you go yeah. Yeah. yeah and then the other drink that was my favorite was the dragon fire one the, that you no, made the dragon breath the dragon breath i can't remember yeah. what was in it was everclear rumple mints no no 151 rumple mints and there was something else i don't know you always took me up when it was it would it, <laughs> We said, "Don't try one here, some AC DC in this, in this mostly hip hop club." Dude. And then he taught me how to play music. So before we get started, I go to the DJ booth and then hell and be like, "Oh my god, you get this guy out of here!" Yeah, you yeah. <laughs> like a little Aerosmith, and they're like, "No, you know, put some P Diddy on you, weirdo." So. Exactly. Yeah, that's crazy. The Dragon's Breath. Uh, Mike McGrett actually caught me on Facebook and asked me about the Dragon's Breath. Mm-hmm. What's up, Mike McGrett? So, I remember yeah. that one. Yeah. What's that was your, my favorite. What was your drink as a as a youngster? Oh my gosh, uh, I I never did mix drinks very well. Uh, whiskey and me was never a good combination. So I, I'm gonna have to say Coors Light was probably still and is still my my drink of choice. You you were not a drinker. Uh, I was a drinker. I just I didn't drink mixed drinks. It was it was beer. When I started that club, we got <laughs> I'm gonna laughingly say this a shift drink. <laughs> <laughs> Most people got a shift drink. I took some people's shift drinks. And so, anyway, uh, Jack was the first bartender I dealt with. I started as a waiter, oh. a cocktail waiter, right? Uh, more cock than tail, I would tell people. Ha, ha, ha. Because <laughs> uh, I got like, a bunch of shit for it. But anyway, uh, he goes, what do you want for your shift drink? And I'm from a small town. Like you said, I'll, I'll take a Bud Light, a shot of vodka, you know, because that's what you drink. And he goes, you want an oatmeal cookie? And being the fat guy, I'm like, well, if you're, uh, yeah, if we got one of those here too, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> Shit, yeah, hook, hook, hook me up. And the Bud Light, you know? <laughs> and he gave me a shot of oatmeal cookie, and that's the first time, sadly enough, I've been in bars before, realized, well, they can mix all kinds of crazy shit here, you mm-hmm. know? So every day for shift drink for my first year, I'd be like, what are you making me? And they're like, <laughs> just throwing shit into a into a glass and letting the fat kid drink it. Let's see what else he'll drink. You know what I mean? So I was, I was the, uh, yeah. It was, it was always fun when a new, uh, a new, what was there? Uh, the guys that helped you. What Barbacks. Were, Barbacks. Okay. And when the new ones would come in, this guy right here. I used to get so excited because you see the initiation. They had to drink the, the bar mat. Oh, oh that's right. no. With all no. and everything. And I remember one time, Larry, mm. you just powered one, and it was just mm. filthy and dirty. And <laughs> I was like, bring it. Let's let's see this happen. They're not the only ones trying. Like <laughs> there was a waitress that came to the bar, and uh, some guy was being an asshole, just, just a prick to be a prick. 
and she was almost in tears. And I was like, tell him I'm going to buy him a shot. And she looked at me like, are you serious? I'm like, you're damn right I'm serious. So I took that mat. It's got curdled milk in it. It's got, I put a little, I put like a, a bar rag over it to filter it out, you know, because I'm not a whole monster. <laughs> <laughs> so I pour that thing in there, too. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. And I give it to her, and she's like, <laughs> Yep, yep. So he liked it. He wanted more. Oh. <laughs> You're dealing with a piece of shit. That's what you can see. He liked the bar shot. And we did that, and we used to tell people, uh, when they look for something, like, it's in the basement. We keep all that stuff in the basement. There was no basement. Mm-hmm. And everybody in that club would be like, where's the basement? Like, oh, it's over. There. It's like the bikes at the Alamo in the yeah. basement. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'd, uh, we'd be real vague. Like, oh, it's, it's, it's <laughs> the door back over. And people would we'd sit there, and it wasn't a huge place. Yeah. We sit there and watch poor people walk around and, you know, <laughs> dude, one more quick story. Except none, uh, Joe was a bouncer there. He looked like Tony Soprano. Who was that? <laughs> remember Joe? I remember Joe, yes. Joe was drinking as a bouncer heavily one night, <laughs> getting hammered. Helen, and when he went to the DJ booth, he had to go up a, it was like on a big stage, so there was two stairs, right? And Helen would always sit on top of the stairs and watch mm-hmm. the club, right? Joe was just shit-faced. So Joe was going to go walk up the DJ booth his end night. He trips on the stairs and on the way down, grabs Helen's pants. Oh. Just grabs them. And were you there for that? I don't think I was. He falls and he grabs, he just grabs, <laughs> doesn't mean to grab, grabs her and pants her. Oh, no. <laughs> pants is Helen. <laughs> right. <laughs> so he sits down at the bar and he's sad. And I'm like, you pants Helen, dude. You're going <laughs> to, dude, we saw a side of Helen. <laughs> You know, like, you know what I'm saying? So, you're, yeah, you're fired, dude. You might as well go. What are you waiting for? What do you, what do you want, the abuse and the firing? God, just leave, dude. So, yeah, I can't remember Joe's last name, but I'll never forget oh, that. She was, the look on her face was pure rage. She had that Italian anger, mm-hmm. man, that. When she got mad, she got mad. You were you were afraid. Yeah, yeah. She'd freak out on you, man. But, yeah, he pants her. <laughs> that's hilarious. It's like, man, that's ballsy, dude. That's. Wow. So, well, man, we got beat again. Uh, well, 50 50 tonight. 50 50 for you. I mean, I'm <laughs> batting like 110. You know, it's not, <laughs> it's not good. I'm under 200 for sure. But uh, last episode, we both got it right. This episode, mm-hmm. both got it. Good, Troy. I did not see that coming. I thought no. that monkey was for sure real. Me too. I, that's, uh, you said it with my story that, uh, you know, you hoped it was real. That was mine. I was hoping that one was real. <laughs> that's good stuff right there. Uh, mm-hmm. Congratulations. You well, thank you. Thank you. Once again, bullhooker.com. You can check all our stuff and I'll have all Troy's information on this webpage. So you can check that out. And you said you're going to give an offer to somebody. Yes. Uh, if they mentioned that they reach out to me and they mentioned that they listen to this and you know, I'll give them a free one hour one-on-one coaching session. Sounds good, man. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so much, Trevor, for doing this. It's good to yeah, see you, too, man. It's good to see you. I was excited. I was driving up here and late like the usual. And I was going to try to make up an excuse because I always do, but then I feel bad if I tell a lie. So. Yeah, well, I would have believed you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, so. we couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously, you'd go. <laughs> Uh, thank you. And Josh, thanks for sitting in again, man. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for yeah, having so me. It's awesome to see yeah. you. So uh, anyway, thanks so much. I'm Moose Lundstrom. I'm Josh Finley. I'm Troy Rivera. See you guys. Peace. Peace.